Well, guys, I posted this video this morning about the experiment I did recently when I shaded one of my solar strings and then measured if the other solar string, which is not shaded, actually backfeeds the one which is shaded. Because people previously said, I need a diode in each of the strings so this doesn't happen. Well, you have seen the video now. It's not necessary to have a diode. But then... Okay. Yeah, well guys, well and then I did this experiment the other day and proved it is not necessary. It is not necessary to have these diodes, these blocking diodes in each of your solar strings. The first eight comments on this video this morning's were like this. Don't the panels come with diodes on them already? I always thought the diode was already in the panel junction box. The black box on the, uh, on the back of the panel already has the diode. It is also preventing reverse current. I always thought that modern solar panels had diodes built in them. Most of the panels nowadays have these bypass diodes built in. My panels all have reverse blocking diodes in them already, Andy. Doesn't each panel already have blocking diodes? I, I didn't mention this in my video yesterday because I thought this is really basic stuff and, and everyone knows about this diode stuff, but obviously not. And I would say 90% of the comments got this all wrong. They all think the diode inside the junction box, inside the connection box or the solar panel is a blocking diode. It's not. We've got two different diodes in solar systems. One of them is a bypass diode, which is in the junction box of the solar panels in the connection box. Uh, I actually probably have one here. Yeah, yeah, here we can see it. Okay, here you can see the diode inside a connection box of a solar panel. This is a very cheap solar panel, but it still has a diode in there. You can also clearly see there's the positive symbol on the plastic and there's the negative negative symbol on the plastic. So the diode is in reverse and also it's in parallel to the actual solar panel contacts. So this means this is clearly a bypass diode. And my experiment was about blocking diodes. We wanted to prove, I wanted to prove that current or power is not going from one solar string into another one if this one is shaded. So I clearly disproved that with my experiment yesterday, but all your comments, they are not about blocking diodes. They are about bypass diodes. This is totally different to a blocking diode. Okay, let me put this together quickly. I just need some alcohol. Guys, geez, your comments. All right, let me explain this. Okay, so this is the bypass diode, which is already mounted in your connection box on the solar panels. Even these very cheap ones here for a couple of dollars, they have a bypass diode. You only need this bypass diode if you put solar panels in series, like here. If you have them in parallel, the bypass diode will not work, will not do anything, it's not necessary. And even in a serious connection, it is not really necessary unless you have a lot of panels in series. With three panels, it will not make a difference. But you know, on my house roof, I got nine panels per string in series. And here the bypass diode makes a real difference. So in normal operation, all the diodes are in plug direction. Nothing happens with the diodes. There's no current going through and the solar panels are working fine. So if we have shading on one solar panel, for example, the other two panels are still trying to push current through there, but the internal resistance rises, of course, of this panel. So the current is now searching for the path of the lowest resistance and finding the bypass diode of much smaller resistance than the actual solar panel. So in this case, the current will go through this panel and then use the bypass diode to bypass the shaded panel and then goes into the next panel 
and boom, so to speak. That's what we say. So if you have 40 volt per cell, of course you're getting only 80 volt out of this system here now. And as I said, it doesn't make much sense if you have only two, three or four panels in series. But if you have nine panels in series, you can imagine if you take one panel out, the overall voltage of this string is still very high and usable for the inverter. So this is the function of the bypass diode. It bypasses the panel in case of shading, a single panel in a series connection. And what I showed in my video yesterday is a blocking diode. A blocking diode is a totally different animal and has a totally different usage to a bypass diode. Because the blocking diode is in series with all your panels, not in parallel, like the bypass one. And these blocking diodes, they are not included in your solar panel connection box. I have opened a lot of these connection boxes and I've never seen a blocking diode in one of these panels. Never ever. There are one to five bypass diodes installed in these panels, but never a blocking diode. And the blocking diode is only preventing from power going this way through the solar panels. So you can watch my video from yesterday where I exactly explained what the blocking diode is for. So guys, don't mix up a bypass diode and a blocking diode. Bypass is already in your junction box and bypasses one panel if it's shaded so the others are still working. But your voltage of course is reduced by this voltage of the shaded panel. The blocking diode on the other hand prevents current and power going into a string altogether. And as I showed in my video yesterday, this diode is not necessary. And then a lot, quite a lot actually, unfortunately, damn it, a lot, a lot of comments. I didn't drink all the beer, I've got a second one, that was just for, you know. A lot of people are saying a solar panel acts like a diode and a blocking, and a blocking diode is therefore not necessary. This is not 100% true. A solar panel is not a diode. There, there can be current flowing in both directions through a solar panel. What? Sorry? You don't believe me? Okay, so what I have here, I've got my old power supply here. We turn this quickly on, set this one to zero volts. And we also have a single solar cell here, which I think, oh yes, here. Uh, it says voltage open circuit, 5.5 volts, and the short current is 170 milliamps. This is what this solar cell can produce. And we've got the positive here on the red cable and the negative on this side. Okay, let's turn this around. It doesn't really matter though. Okay, let me connect the positive. So we've got the positive solar cable connected to this red wire, connected to the positive terminal of my power supply. And we are doing the same. I need an assistant or third hand. Got the negative of the solar panel connected to this black wire and connected to the power supply as well. So there's nothing happening, of course. Well, what can we do here? Well, let's increase the voltage a little bit and watch the amps. So you can see the voltage here, 0 0.2 amps, uh, 0 0.2 volts. And we've got zero amps. We are on 0 0.2 amps at maximum of this instrument here. So let's increase the voltage just a bit. Three volts. Mm. Nothing happens. So people are right. This one acts like a diode. It doesn't let any current flow in this direction, right? Okay, let's increase the voltage a little bit more. Four volts, nothing. A little bit more. Oh, what can we see now? 4.4 volts. What's happening now? Five volts. We've got about 30 milliamps going through the solar panel. 
5.5 volts. This is the voltage the actual solar panel delivers. We've got around 80 milliamps now going through the solar panel. What is happening here? So we are on 6 volts and we've got about 150 milliamps going through the solar panel. If we put our positive down here and the negative down here from the solar, nothing happens until a certain voltage and then we can push current through the solar panel. And as people said, you don't need the plugging diode because the solar cell already acts as a diode. Totally wrong. It is not true. Even if many people repeat this in the comments, it is not true. The solar panel does not act like a diode in terms of a plugging diode. It will not plug the current going through. If we have 40 volt, 40 volt, 40 volt, so 120 volt all in total, and we've got another of these strings next to it, and we don't have this diode in here, and we would completely shade this string, there is the possibility that this string is actually feeding power through the whole shaded string, as we have just seen. And the solar cell has 5.5 volts. From around 4.4 volts, we could see a current going through the cell. And this is exactly what would happen here if we would cover the whole string. But another source with even a lower voltage would be able to push current through the string. And a plugging diode actually would help in this case. But as I said yesterday, this scenario is, is practically not... It, is, it does not happen. It does not happen. You, you don't have two in the identical strings in the same direction in parallel. And one of them is so shaded that the other one is able to push current through. Current goes always the path of the lowest resistance. And the lowest resistance or the lowest point of voltage is always your charge controller. This is where the power goes. It is practically impossible to have one string that shaded so the other string would feed power through it. Really, I mean, if you put cardboard on the solar panels, yes, you would have a case. But when is this happening? When is one of your solar strings being shaded by cardboard and the other one next to it not? I mean, how often does this happen per month to you? Really? Well, guys, so you know now what a bypass diode is in comparison to a plugging diode. And you also have seen a solar panel is not acting like a diode. It is letting current through even if it's fully shaded. So even if many people are repeating the same thing, it doesn't make it true. You have to do your testing. You have to see what actually happens. Ah, I think I think we have to go back to a little bit more basic stuff sometimes just to make things clear. I think there's a lot of misconception and a lot of wrong knowledge. You know, people just take this for granted because they have read it somewhere else and people are repeating the same stuff all over again. Okay guys, I think this is it for tonight. Yeah, please let me know in the comments down below if you still have any questions about these diode functions in solar panels, bypass or plugging diodes. And if we actually should make more of these basic videos again and do some experiments to prove our theories. And I hope I have just busted another myth, maybe even two. Yeah, and always guys, thank you so much for watching this um, follow-up video from this morning. And, and I hope you stay charged and safe. And we shall see us again in the next video coming out very soon with some 